In this video, we're going to go over several of the sensors that you can use in FRC. Some of these sensors will be in your kit of parts and some of them won't. Here are two different types of encoders, a rotary encoder and a linear encoder. First, we're going to look at the rotary encoder. Rotary encoders are used to tell how far something has rotated. The way you use this sensor is by mounting this little magnet on something that rotates and putting it right above this little black chip here. So the magnet rotates and the sensor detects how far and fast. You connect it to your robot with a PWM cable. So you can see it's labeled ground right here, so that's where the black wire goes. Fits on just like this. And then the other side of the wire connects right here in your analog in breakout board that's connected to your serial. You can see it's labeled here. Black wire is negative and the signal is white wire. So it goes in like this. And there you go. You've now connected your rotary encoder. Now, this here is a linear encoder. You use this magnetic strip. You can put this on something like maybe an elevator. If your robot has an elevator that has to go like this, um, you can use this sensor to detect how far it's gone. So you connect this magnetic strip to one part of your robot and this sensor to the other part. Then you mount the sensor right close to the magnetic strip and it'll detect how far it's gone linearly like this. Connecting the sensor is a little bit more complicated because it's a quadrature encoder. Basically what that means practically is you have to connect four wires instead of just three. So that means you need to make a cable like this with two PWM wires. So for the first cable, the 5 volts, you can see it labeled right here, says 5V, that stands for 5 volts. You connect that to the red wire, and then it says GND, that stands for ground. You connect that to the black wire, and then one, set, one of the connectors says A. You connect that to the white wire of the first PDM cable. And then you connect B to the white, or in this case, orange wire of the second PWM cable. Then once you're done making that cable, you connect both of the PWM wires to your digital sidecar's digital I.O. pins. The first one that was connected to B should go into um, whichever one you choose. And then the second wire should go in the one after it. So say, just, just to make programming easier, so say if you put the one that's connected to A, you'll want to put that in 1, and you want to put the B in 2, or say you're already using 1 and 2, you might want to put it on 10 and 11. You can put on whatever ones you want, it just makes programming easier to have them on consecutive numbers. Next we have the gyroscope. This is analog, just like the rotary encoder. That's the reason why you plugged it into the analog in breakout board. So the gyroscope is used to detect rotation. So if you wanted to be able to tell how far your robot had rotated, you would use this sensor. It detects rotation on this axis. So say if you were to pro um, plug it into your programming right now, you'd be able to tell exactly how many degrees I had rotated it. One disappointing thing is this does not work very quickly. If I were to connect this to my programming and calibrate it to work turning it slowly, it wouldn't give you the same value as if you turned it really fast because there's a maximum speed you can turn it. Say if I turned it like this, it wouldn't give me an accurate reading of how much I had actually turned it. This is okay when you're just measuring how far your robot turns because usually your robot doesn't turn fast enough um, for it to mess up but 
Um, just keep that in mind when you're choosing where to use this. Same as the rotary encoder, you connect it with just a normal PWM wire. You can see here it says temp and rate. Temperature is used to calibrate it, but we don't really use that. Um, so what you want to do is take the PWM wire and plug it in uh, like this. If you look on the back, you can see that um, the pin all the way to the right is ground. Um, so you plug it in like this. It's not labeled. I just know that because the um, pin is connected to the ground going into all the little components. That's not obvious, and I don't know why they didn't label it, but you just have to learn that here, I guess. So the black wire goes all the way um, to the side, like this. Then the other side of your wire plugs into the analog in just like the other sensor. This is an accelerometer. It's used basically for detecting acceleration. So for example, if you wanted to see if your robot had moved forward and how fast, you could use an accelerometer. There are two ways to connect the accelerometer. One is using the um, SPI header, which requires four PWM cables. And another way is using the I2C port, which requires two PWM wires or um, one special four wire um, I2C cable. To connect the accelerometer via the SPI header, you need to connect the zero volt one to ground, five volt to the red wire, and CK, DI, DO, and CS each to their own white wire on a separate PWM wire. So for example your first wire would have the black connected to 0 volts, red connected to 5 volts, and the white connected to CK. Then the next one would have only the white wire connected to DI, and then the next one would have only the white wire connected to DO, and then the next one would have only the white wire connected to CS. So you'd have a total of four PWM wires. Then what you'd need to do is connect each of those wires to a digital I.O. header. So you'd have one on one, two, three, and four, or whatever four consecutive pins you wish. Then your second option is to use I squared C. You just connect each of these pins to each of the pins labeled on the digital sidecar. If you look here, it's labeled five volts, SCL, SDA, and negative. So just wire it the same way as it's labeled here. Here's another type of encoder. This one is an optical rotary encoder. To use it, you have to have the electronics here and a wheel here um, connected down here, like this. The way it works is this little sensor right here counts each of the little tiny black lines on this wheel and tells you exactly how many degrees your motor has turned. When you buy an encoder, it should come with a wire that looks like this. This just plugs in here, like so. Then you must solder a custom cable with two PWM ends. The wires go like this. The orange wire is connected to the positive 5 volts, so the red wire on your first PWM cable. The blue wire is connected to the white wire on your first PWM cable. And then the brown wire is connected to the ground of your first PWM cable, the black wire. And then the yellow is connected to the white um, signal wire on your second PWM wire. Um, in this case, it's orange because it's a different color of PWM cable. And then you plug both of these into consecutive uh, digital I.O. ports. So you can plug it into any consecutive ones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, 10, doesn't matter. You just need to know which ones so you can put it in your programming. The next sensor we have is a sonar. This is a sonar by Max Sonar. It's the EZ-1 model. 
it's used for detecting distance. So say I could use this sensor to detect how far away I am from the edge of the field or from another robot. Wherever you point it, it'll tell you how far away the object is. This sensor does have a cone shape, so say if I were trying to measure just a small dot over here, it wouldn't work very well because it measures by that time sort of a circle. So if you just have like a wire here, it would just make some interference. It wouldn't really tell you exactly how far away. However, it works great for detecting walls. So say if I had my hand here, it would work great but it would work poorly if it was just like a wire or my finger. There are two different ways to wire this sensor with analog or digital. First the ground wire, the black wire goes into the ground here, red wire goes into the plus 5 volts and the white wire or in this case yellow wire goes into the either AN or PW. If you wish to use analog input, you can solder your wire onto the AN pin. If you wish to use digital input, you can solder it to the PW. If you decide to use analog input, you want to plug the other end of your wire into your analog in. If you want to use digital, you want to plug it into your digital I.O. here. Last but not least, we have a limit switch. All this does is detect when this switch is pressed. It's very, very useful for limiting things, hence its name. Um, for example, if you want your elevator not to go down past a certain point, you can tell your motors to stop moving when it hits the limit switch. These are super useful. A few of these should come in your kit of parts. You wire this with the PWM wire um, to the digital I.O. ports on your digital sidecar. To make a cable, you have to crimp a couple things. If you look on the side, you can see a little tiny schematic. Um, what, one of these pins is normally open and one is normally closed, which means depending on which one of these you connect to, it'll either be on when it's not pressed or on when it is pressed. So, for example, if I were to plug uh, my cable from here to here, it would be off when pressed and on when released. If I were to connect it here, it would be on when it's pressed and off when it's released. I custom made this wire so I could make it whatever colors I want and I chose red and white. However, if you were going to use a PDO beam wire that comes with your kit, it will be black and white rather than red and white. Um, the most important thing is that it's just the two cables on each side. Um, so one of the cables from this side and one of the cables from this side. You don't want the one from the middle connected to anything. What that's going to do is let you connect it to your digital I.O. port. And then when it detects that um, there's continuity between these two wires, it'll tell the programming that it's on.